dad is originally from here, from Hawaii, and all my family's, my dad's side of the family's here, you know, being part Hawaiian, all that, that was just a part of the way we grew up and learning those things as a kid, but I grew up on the mainland, and so we would come here every summer, stay with family, and, and so this was pretty much like my second home, and I always knew that I wanted to be here. Um, I had a knee injury where I dislocated my kneecap, <laughs> really painful, <laughs> um, and I did it once. I went through physical therapy, had the big brace, all that fun stuff that like, comes like with how, it. How old were you when you got the first one? Um, I think it was 15, 14 or 15. Huh. Okay. Back into soccer. Not going to let this stop me. Um, started to get back into it and it just became a reoccurring injury where I would play, I would dislocate my knee and I'd be out for a couple months or I'd be out for, you know, that season. And it was just happening over and over to the point that I would walk. And if I turned like in a weird direction, my knee would dislocate with that was, you know, pretty much the end of my soccer career, just because, I mean, having that surgery, it was a pretty intensive surgery and it was just going to be too much to heal from and didn't want to re re injure it again. You know, it could be, could have been much worse. Like it's not the end of the world, but you know, when that was my life, after that, I was like, what am I supposed to do now? Like, that's all I wanted to do, you know? And uh, But now I see, I feel like I've been able to make more of an impact with the, oppor you know, opportunities I've had as Miss Hoy and been able to do things that I, and grown in ways that I would have never expected. So I think it all worked out the way it needed to as much as I didn't like it. Sorry, my parents are very supportive and they were my number one fans in soccer, especially my dad, because it's a sport, you know, that's your dad and seeing his little girl like be into a sport was fun for him. Um, and so I think after I got injured, it was almost, I think, frustrating for him, too, because there wasn't necessarily anything that he could do to change it. They took care of me a lot and I can see that now and, and appreciate it more now. Um, looking back and, you know, I would sleep in my mom's bed. My dad would give up you know his spot in the bed to sleep in mine and my mom would take care of me and you know give me my medicine and, and walk me and, and things like that when I needed it um and they did a lot I mean I see it now and it's like I don't know I guess I haven't really thought about it until now <laughs> since we've been talking about it all kinds of things I mean with my dad's profession he was able to teach me you know different ways to public speak and and how to write better and just the things that you know, make my resume look better and things like that. So um, a lot of different things that I started to learn from them. Um, and I learned a lot more about my parents, about the different skills that they have and how they can help me. Like having a child who's really into sports and athletics, when that child gets injured, you know, it, it can be earth shattering for the child. But yeah, you got to see it from the parents' point of view too. Like, how do they transition? You know, I think your parents did a great job mm -hmm. and super supportive and they kept trying to look for something for else for you to do yeah which is probably the way to go I feel like a lot of times we put limits on ourselves, um, and whether that's you know our own fears or misconceptions or caring too much about what other people think that we almost prohibit ourselves from achieving great things I, well I love meeting people I love communicating with people and I feel like after this life, you know, I want to be remembered as someone who like always made people feel special. And I, I think as Miss Hoy, I've, I've had a lot of experiences where I'm meeting kids and, you know, spending time with people and, and talking to them. And, you know, I don't want it to be all about me. You know, like when I go to an event or I'm volunteering with kids, I don't want to say, oh, there's Nikki with a crown. You know, I, I want them to feel like they're special. Through those experiences, I'm able to see, you know, these young girls, these young boys who are really going through some hard times. You know, they're they're sick, they're or injured for months at a time, um, and hopefully making their day better. And, you know, just spending time with them, making them feel special. And especially, you know, because I see these kids who are much younger than I was, who are facing injuries or, or illnesses that could be lifelong, you know, and mine was just a, maybe a couple years or just, you know, this temporary thing. And so I see these kids who are going through something much, much worse, uh, but to see their po how positive they are and just how brave they are from, for everything they've had to go through. You go through those, t those moments in life where you feel like nothing is going right and it's really easy to get yourself in that mindset, especially with everything that's been happening this year with COVID and 
Um, you know, things this year hasn't been what anybody has expected it to be. Um, and I think the, the hard part is, is once you start thinking like that, like, oh, the world is against me, everything's going wrong, it's really easy to get stuck into that and to think that, you know, and so um, at least for this year, I've been really trying to find things I'm grateful for. And I think with COVID, it kind of made me slow down a little bit and appreciate the little things, family time, even just talking to my parents on the phone or watching the sunset, like just the little things that I think we sometimes take for granted. Uh, but really like realizing realizing what I'm grateful for and to realize, you know, sometimes times aren't the best. Sometimes times are hard, but there's still a lot of good things and life is still beautiful. Sometimes life doesn't follow your plan, you know, and it just things don't necessarily go the way you want, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. And that doesn't mean that it's not good, that it didn't go the way you want. Um, and so I think to learn that um, even if it's not what you want right now, it could be what you want later. You know, it could be something that is way better than you could ever imagine. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to this channel on YouTube. And if you want to just listen to the podcast, you can listen to uh, the audio versions on Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio, uh, Google Podcasts. And you can also listen to direct, directly from the website, hawaiirealpodcast.com. Again, that's hawaiirealpodcast.com. Go to there. You can also subscribe on the website and um, keep up to date with all of these uh, short clip videos that I post and also the full-length um, audio podcasts on that website.